Hello guys, I've got a couple of interesting kits for you here today. Well, at least I hope that's what's in this box or it's going to be a short video. One of these is a tank which has no uh, mainstream kits available for it, it's only available in resin. And the other is one which has no other kits available as far as I can tell. These are both kits from Vargas Models which is a company based in the US. It's actually an individual guy who makes these and they are 3D printed kits. As you can see here, the kits I've got are the Matilda Mark 1, the A11, which is completely unrelated to the more famous Matilda Mark 2 tank, and the Vickers No. 1 interwar tank. So until recently, these kits were only available direct from the US, either on eBay or on the, uh, the Vargas Models website. But unfortunately both of those methods had quite high shipping rates to the UK. However recently the Tank Museum has started to stock a limited selection of these kits and although they're not cheap that has brought the, uh, the shipping cost down so I decided to get a couple of them. So let's have a look at what's available first of all on the Tank Museum website. This is only a limited selection of the whole range that's available so I'll show you the Vargas website in a moment. But you can see here we've got the Vickers No. 1, which is an interwar tank, which is the one that I purchased. We've also got the Liberty International Mark 8. I didn't go for this one, although it looks like a massive beast of a tank. You can see here, it does say in the corner here, that this, um, this image includes details which are not uh, in the kit. And then finally we've got the Bob Semple Tank No. 1, which is a New Zealand tank from 1941. The Tank Museum also did have in stock the Matilda A11. Um, I don't know if I got the last one or what. Um, but you can see here actually on the right hand side, three of those four models seem to be out of stock at the moment. Personally I think that's a good thing because it does say here on the Tank Museum website that the range held will be expanded subject to demand. So the fact that they were all available earlier this week when I bought them and they're now out of stock suggests that demand has been quite high. As you can see from the website, these are not particularly cheap. They were um, 59.99 British pounds. Um, there is a 10% off offer at the moment on the Tank Museum website, but of course they're still not particularly cheap. To be honest, I compare this to a resin kit, um, and limited run resin kits are pretty expensive too. So, you know, to buy a couple of these and just see what they're like, I'm not too um, put off by the price. Obviously, if there are about 10 of them that I wanted, that would be a a different issue. But again, a bit like resin kits, a lot of the time you're paying for the unusual uh, nature of them as well, aren't you? So, you know, if there was a Tiger 1 here, I probably wouldn't buy it. I would just go buy a Takum Tiger 1 or something, but you're not going to find a lot of these kits elsewhere. Right, before we proceed, let's have a look at the Vargas Scale Models website and see what else they offer. As you can see straight away, it's quite a wide range of unusual products. And to be honest, I think most subjects here are not available in any other format. There is a little bit of a mix, but in general it seems to be World War I and interwar tanks. So you can see the Bob Semple tank there that I mentioned earlier. A very interesting looking German tank there, whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce, from 1912. And of course these are only 135th scale, and it does tend to be that when you get the, um, the resin kits, often of these unusual subjects, they tend to be in 172nd scale. So if you prefer 135th scale, this is probably the place to look. We've got a couple of versions of the Christie tank here. So we've got the model 1919, the 1921 and the 1931 model. And then the T3E2-3 Interwar series. And I say that like I know what it means, but I really don't. But if you're into that kind of thing, um, yeah, you've got three different options, four different options there you can choose from. We have an American Civil War Mortar here, that's very unusual. An early Italian tank, Fiat 2000. A Ford Model T chase track system there. And then a few um, mortars and guns, um, as well as that Liberty tank on the uh, bottom row there. Looking at the second page, there's our Matilda A11. Armoured car, some early war French tanks. Our Vickers number one is there. Trench mortars, more armoured cars, some very interesting subjects here. The Holt steam wheel, 
tank big wheel land ship. I can genuinely say I've never heard of that one. That's a US tank by the looks of it. And then the final page, the Holt gas electric tank. That looks interesting. Not entirely dissimilar to Little Willie, that one. And then over on the right hand side, one that really interests me there, that World War I pioneer skeleton tank. That looks very interesting. And then further down the page, we have a few models um, that we've seen already, but these are now in 170 second scale. So if you do prefer that scale, you've got a few options there as well, including that Christie uh, T3E2. So I'll try to remember to put a link to this website in the description below. And as I mentioned, if you're in the UK, you might also find these on the Tank Museum's website. Right, let's get back to the kits and have a look at those. So as I say, they're 3D printed kits, so let's have a look inside the box. Let's start with the Vickers number no. 1. So this is an interwar tank, and only two prototypes were built. You can see a nice muddy photo there on the front, uh, front of the box. Let's get the box open there. So we've got a colour instruction sheet. We'll have a look at that in a moment. And then some nice packaging. Got some bubble wrap here. Okay, this looks like the turret. It's got an interesting sort of uh, three-directional turret there for the machine guns. We've got the main hull of the tank. Some empty packaging, we'll keep that. 3D printed parts are of course quite delicate, so they do need to be packed carefully and it does look like they have been. And then it looks like in here we've got the track pieces. Yes we do. And this is actually the track pieces for the left and right, they've been printed together in one piece, um, separate but, but on the same uh, uh, sprue for want of a better word. There's a parts list on the back of the instructions and as you can see there's not a lot of parts in this. At first I did think I was missing part 4 and 5, the machine guns and the turret hatch. I did look all over for them and then I realised they were actually printed underneath the turret on the same sprue so when the turret comes off you can see those pieces below. But yes, quite a small part list for this. This is going to be a painting and weathering exercise more than a build exercise, I think. So let's take a quick look at the instructions and then we'll look at the parts in more detail. So we've got the nice colour image on the front and then inside here we've got uh, some reference photos. One of those photos, the bottom left, is easy to find online. I haven't found the others, so it's quite useful to have those. You can see you've got a number six on the side of that tank. There are no decals in this kit, but it should be relatively easy, I think, to put a number six on the side. Okay, let's get the parts out of bags and look at them in more detail. So here is the main hull piece. We've got some nice rivets there, very small, very detailed rivets all around the side. Common characteristic of uh, World War I and interwar tanks, of course. We've got this raised um, hatch at the back, some nice grills on the rear. These holes in the side, of course, are just lightning holes to um, lighten the, the piece and reduce the amount of material used. We do have a few layer lines here on the front. That's, that's quite a common problem with 3D printing, and to be honest, they're not very bad compared to uh, well, what I could produce at home, for example. Here's our turret. So again with 3D printing you get supports quite often and you can see a few of these are broken off in the packaging. The others need to be cut off. So I'm just going to do that now with a sharp knife. This is probably a good time to mention that if you are cutting or especially sanding resin then you do need to be wearing a respirator because you do not want to be breathing in resin dust. And really as well, when I sand this, I'll be wearing gloves because I don't want that dust to get in my hands and then get in uh, everything else that I touch. So here we have the turret removed from those supports. 
it needs a bit of clean up still of course you can see a little bit of a as a part left over there but it fits very nicely onto the body of that tank and there's our hatch piece again we've got nice um, rivet detail there and hinge detail and our four machine guns there not to be confused with the parts I'm not quite sure why there's four it did only say three on the instructions maybe they're just a bonus one in case you break one now finally we have this track block here Got some supports there again in the middle. And dozens and dozens of supports along the bottom, which you would expect because, of course, they need to be uh, OK when they're printing. So what I'm going to do now is remove the supports off camera. They can just be cut away, but it might take a while. And then I will come back once they're done. And there we go. Through the magic of television, we have the supports removed. This is the uh, side of the tank with the tracks. You can see we do have a couple of sort of uh, imperfections in the side there, and sort of not layer lines, but almost uh, layer lines. To be honest, they will probably be covered up by a coat of primer. They shouldn't be too bad. And again, I need to clean up the tracks. I just haven't done that yet. But also good rivet detail on the side there. And that vargascalemodels.com will of course be hidden once the tra tracks slot into place, which they do with those nice little pins at the front and back. There we go. Job done, tank constructed. Apart from the machine guns and the hatch. We've just got a few rough pieces on the bottom of the track still, which is why it's not quite laying flat. But there we are, there's our Vickers Mark I tank. As I say, it's going to be a painting and weathering experience rather than a uh, build experience. OK, let's move on now to the Matilda. Again, this is the Matilda A11. So this tank did see service at the beginning of World War II, uh, in the Battle of France, for example. However, it was really outdated um, at that time. If I remember correctly, it did have good armour. So it was protected from uh, German anti-tank guns of the time, but it had quite limited firepower itself. This, as you can see here, has far, far more parts than the previous kit. So we'll just unpack them and then have a closer look. Again, all nicely packed uh, in bags and in bubble wrap. This is the main hull of the tank. That looks really good. And the tracks looking much more complicated than the previous tank. Right, let's get this out of the way and have a close look. Let's start with the instructions. So very similar at the front, interwar World War II tank, nice picture of the model, and the, uh, the reference numbers if you're looking for them online. A slightly thicker instruction manual, this one. So uh, please read, placing the tracks at least four times each onto the hull. Sorry, practice placing the tracks onto the hole. It's critical you're familiar with their placement and can attach them smoothly and easily. Okay, no fat thumbs. Do not place or glue until all assembly has been completed. Okay. This is a multi-pose kit. The kit can be made with different variants by adding or omitting the optional parts provided. Okay, study the provided photographs to determine which option you'd like. Okay. And then here we have uh, a built-up version of the model and some CAD imagery and some numbers. I'm not quite sure what those numbers refer to. They're not sequential. I see a number 1 and a 3. I don't see a 2 or 4, 5, 6 or anything else. I'm not quite sure what those are at this stage. I wonder if these are the optional parts. That might make sense. Now you can place the tracks without destroying everything. Okay, well, that's a, a bonus, isn't it? Um, then we've got a couple of nice pictures over here. So the bottom one there is clearly the uh, Tank Museum at Bovington. Um, and then a contemporary photo um, in the middle. Much bigger uh, part list here, 51 parts. So let's take a closer look at them. So first of all here, we have the main hull of the tank. Looking pretty nice, actually. 
Again, good detail, just like the other kit. Really fine detail on this. So we've got the fire extinguishers on the side, the tools, lots of rivets again. It's amazing how much detail there is in 3D printing here. We've got some cables and wires. There is this line around here. I don't think that's deliberate. Now you don't get um, mold lines in 3D printing like you do in injection molding, but you can get layer lines and I wonder if that is what has happened. We've got that cable on the side and that lovely mesh there. So again, I guess in a regular kit, uh, that mesh would be photo etch, but uh, in uh, 3D printing, it doesn't need to be. We've got something stuck there in, in this box. What's this? Uh, that's something that's broken off. Uh, a light. I think that's supposed to go there by the looks of it, but I'll double check that on the instructions. That's obviously snapped off during shipping. Yes, I think that seam line will need to be sanded down. Sorry, not seam line, it's a, uh, a layer line. And onto the tracks, much, much more complicated than the uh, Vickers number one. A lot of this is support, so this uh, archway here and then this uh, other piece is basically just holding the, uh, the top part of the track in place while it prints. So all of that will need to be cut away. Again, it's a bit of work, but to be honest, it's probably easier than cutting pieces uh, in a resin kit away from their blocks. Great sag on those tracks too. And then finally, we've got the uh, all the other pieces together here on this one big block with this protective cage around it. So we have the turrets here, periscope detail, hatch detail, very nice indeed. We've got a couple of uh, wooden crates I think over here. So these are probably some of the optional parts that it mentioned earlier and they've all got lids as well. Then we've got the mud guards here. I'm not sure what that is in front of there, but that's a spade there and a pickaxe. Three really lovely helmets. I'm tempted to say that those helmets are a bit thinner than an injected molded equivalent. Some um, uh, flimsies there for fuel or oil. Some tow hooks. And some very thin, if I can get them in focus, racks there for presumably for storing those flimsies. That all looks really good, that looks very well detailed. And you can see, I think, in the middle of that shot there, we have what I think is the barrel. So guys, that was my quick look at these two kits from Vargas Models. What did I think of them? Well, I really like the subject matter on both of them. And in fact, to be honest, I really like the subject matter on most of the kits available from them. I do hope that the Tank Museum expand their range more in the future. So I could be tempted to buy another one or two of these. Now I'm one of those people who does like the building of model kits as much as the painting and the weathering. So to not have that element is, is you know, part of the experience missing for me. Um, but on the plus side, you know, these are subjects which you, you simply can't get. As I say, I think there is an accurate armour model of the Matilda A11, but that's very hard to find these days, I believe. And I don't think there's any kit of the Vickers number no. 1. So just having that unique model on the shelf is going to be a, a bonus for me. Quality wise, they look really good. There's nothing obviously missing. And I think this time period, interwar, World War I, it's, uh, it's hard to find a lot of accurate references. In many cases, there are either none of these tanks left or there's only one left in the world. So I certainly can't criticize it for lack of detail and I'm pretty sure most people wouldn't be able to either. Price of course is a big issue there. 60 pounds uh, is quite expensive. But, you know, as I said, I've compared it to a, a limited run resin kit uh, throughout the video, and I think that's the best way to think about it. 
Without wanting to tempt fate, I think there'll be less cleanup required than there would be on a resin kit, with hopefully just a small amount of sanding required. I am going to build this Vickers number one as soon as possible because it's quite an easy build and then I can get on to painting and weathering it. But yes, from what's in the box, I would say I'm happy with what I've got there. So guys, what do you think about 3D printing? How do you think it is going to change model making in the future? Do you think we'll see more of this thing where we see these um, quite unusual and common subjects coming out as 3D models, either as digital files to download and print at home, or like this as kits for us to purchase? What rare or unusual kit would you like to see? Have you tried 3D printing? Is 3D printing something you would like to see more of on my channel? Uh, if you've got any thoughts on the matter, then please do leave a comment below. And of course, I want to say thank you to all of you for watching, and a big thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. And until next time, have fun modelling.